and welcome back to a fun little recipe video on student meal ideas. So the steps for these five recipes should be pretty simple. There aren't too many weird, expensive ingredients involved and uh, the meals are just generally quite tasty, I would say. By the way, your recent suggestions on Instagram helped me come up with most of these ideas. So thank you so much for participating in that. I always forget to say this, but feel free to click thumbs up. And uh, also thank you, thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. Avocado toast was probably the most suggested answer I got. I mean, it's the undisputed number one classic lazy meal for a reason. But I was thinking a way you could spice up your avocado toast experience would be to fuse it with some savory, salty French toast. Avocados aren't always the cheapest ingredient, I know, which is why you could easily substitute it with some store-bought hummus, which is honestly just as delicious. To a deep dish plate, add a tablespoon of cornstarch and about two tablespoons of your already measured non-dairy milk. Give this a good mix until there's no starch clumps left, and then you can pour in the remaining milk. Add some salt, some garlic powder, turmeric, white wine vinegar, and some fresh or frozen parsley. Now to a non-stick skillet, you're gonna add some olive oil and bring that to medium high. By the way, this should be enough for three to four pieces of bread. Once the pan is hot, dip a piece into the mixture, keep it in there for a couple seconds, then flip it, and then shake off any excess liquid before you add it to your nonstick skillet. And then just allow it to cook until golden brown for two to three minutes on each side. The outside should be nice and crispy and the inside still slightly soft. Then either spread your avocado or hummus on there. Feel free to add some lemon juice. Also added a few cherry tomatoes here, some smoked tofu. If you happen to have kalanamak, then definitely sprinkle some of that on there. Pasta aglio olio? I don't think that's how you say it. Um, it's one of the easiest, simplest meals out there. And at the same time, it tastes incredibly fancy. My recipe here is not super traditional though, um, since I've decided to add some zucchini and lemon peel as well. But I think all those ingredients really work nicely together. I usually don't add salt to my pasta water, which I know is a kitchen crime, but in this recipe I feel like the pasta needs all the seasoning it can get, so yeah, make sure to generously, generously salt in that water. Add your spaghetti once it's boiling, grab some zucchini, and cut it into ribbons using a vegetable peeler. I would suggest doing two zucchinis actually, that way you get a much nicer zucchini to pasta ratio. Chop up some garlic, lots of it. I quote unquote only did four to five cloves. To a big skillet, add lots of olive oil. I went for a third of a cup here. Add the garlic to the cold oil along with some chili flakes. Bring the heat to medium. Let the garlic and chili cook for about two minutes or until the garlic has become a nice light golden brown. Garlic just generally burns really fast so keep an eye on it. Now fish out the garlic pieces and set those aside for later. Now turn the heat to medium high and add your zucchini. Yeah, let it fry for 8 to 10 minutes or until cooked through. At this point your pasta should be ready as well. Make sure to reserve about a half a cup or so of pasta water before you drain it. Season the zucchini well, add the drained pasta, the cooked garlic, about a fourth of a cup of the pasta water to begin with. Only add more if you feel like it's needed. Some chopped parsley. Highly recommend adding some lemon zest here. Black pepper, uh, lemon juice, more parsley, lots of salt to taste. And that's it. Yogurt and granola, classic combo. Here's a recipe for a small batch of sweet and salty sesame granola. It is, it's too good. First off, line a baking sheet with parchment paper and preheat your oven to 180 degrees Celsius. In a small bowl, combine all the necessary ingredients. A half a cup of small cut oats, which I assume is the same as instant oats, but I'm not 100% sure. They're just a bit smaller cut than the rolled ones, though the rolled ones should also work. So just add any type of oat that you can find. A generous pinch of salt, some flax seeds, ground flax seeds, a bit of cinnamon, sesame seeds, sunflower seed oil, maple syrup or some other liquid sweetener of choice, and one to two teaspoons of non-dairy milk 
or just add water. Transfer this mix to your baking sheet, creating one thin, even layer. And then you're gonna let this bake for 10 to 12 minutes at 180 degrees Celsius. During the last couple of minutes, definitely keep an eye on it since the edges start to darken really quickly, which is what you want to happen. You just don't want it to burn. Let the oats cool fully so they can crisp up really nicely. Once cool, you can break this into smaller chunks and then add some of those to a bowl of plain soy yogurt and banana. If needed, add some extra sweetener I would very much recommend making this. If you've got anything left over, you can add it to a little jar and save that for a future bowl of muesli. This next idea comes from Len underscore Doe. First, you'll need some pita. Where's pita? Oh my god, pita! Pita! If it feels a bit dry, dampen it, then put it into the preheated oven at 220 degrees celsius for about three minutes to a small saucepan add some frozen vegetables of choice i went for a mix of broccoli carrots cauliflower corn and edamame here also add a tablespoon of vegan butter a squeeze or two of lemon juice and some frozen herbs bring the heat to medium high after two to three minutes of cooking i also added a handful of fresh spinach and a bit of vegan feta. This ingredient can also be substituted with a tablespoon or so of hummus. Obviously it won't taste the same, but it'll still season the veggies nicely and create some form of creaminess here. Or use vegan cream cheese if you can find it. Then cut open your pita and fill it with the veggie mix. Feel free to add some hot sauce in here as well. This tastes super satisfying, um, and it's so simple to make, so yeah, thanks for that idea. Now this last recipe was a very improvised meal, created just from random ingredients I could find in my kitchen. Glass noodles are amazing to have on hand, they're usually pretty cheap, and all you need to cook them is a water kettle and like 5 minutes. In a small skillet, I brought a bit of oil to medium heat, together with some chili flakes, and sesame seeds. I let the seeds toast up for one to two minutes before adding some chickpeas and corn. You could really use just any type of, of canned legume, 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 um, that you've got available. I added some vegan Worcestershire sauce here. Um, then also I seasoned it to taste with a few more spices and let it sizzle for like five minutes. The sauce, it's very much reminiscent of that vegan tonkatsu sauce I made a while ago. I combined some ketchup with vegan Worcestershire sauce, again, sub, sub with soy sauce, rice vinegar, garlic powder, a little bit of water, and a bit of sesame oil. I also could have added all those ingredients to the beans directly. Anyway, bring the sauce, the beans, and noodles together. Feel free to add some spring onion here as well. Um, I just found some in my freezer. Those are really poorly cut. Let everything fry for about three minutes and then serve. Maybe with some greens, some more sesame seeds, some chili mayo. Also some avocado or hummus uh, for the topping would be super nice as well here. Yeah, this meal, it it's random, I know. Okay, cool. That is all the recipes I have for you today. I hope you enjoyed watching this. If you did, you know, hit that little thumbs up button. Um, also, big thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring these ideas. I haven't talked about these guys in a minute. Let me remind you that Squarespace is your all-in-one number one platform to create the most stunning website for your CV, your art portfolio, uni project, food blog, or whatever else you might need a website for. Choose one of the many, many professionally designed templates Squarespace has to offer and make them into your own. It's super easy and intuitive. Multiple people can have access to your site, helping you manage it. For me, it would be Artemis who's helping me upload the thousands of recipes I've got on YouTube. Also, no worries, all the content that you put on Squarespace belongs to you and only you always visit squarespace.com slash mina rome or use code mina rome to save 10 percent on your first purchase of a website or domain i've been thinking about you lately she don't really touch she don't really love like me